DJ Damage. Yo. Big bro, welcome. First off, welcome to the set. This is nice too, man. No, Look at like, this. I'm re I've really been waiting for this interview for quite some time. Our last interview we had was cut very short. Word? Yeah, we had an interview like two, three years ago. It got cut short. I think you were busy or something. It was a Sunday, mm. so it got cut short. That's my best. But today's not getting cut short. No, so and I, I love this. Hold up. Let me in the set. Let me soak in the set. We are live with Lamar right now. Live with Lamar. Actually, hitting two years. Damn. In a couple of days. I don't know the exact start date, but yeah, two years ago, we birthed Live with Lamar. And it's neon lights everywhere. It's a lot of lights. Yeah. If you've seen my previous episodes, you know we didn't have this many lights, so I'm blessed for the, the, the come, come on. of the lights. Come on, luminance. You know what I mean? If lighting is important. Yeah, you know that's important. You do photography and mm -hmm. you know a lot of video shit, so you know the lighting matters, but welcome to the set, my yeah, guy. Yeah, I'm just soaking I, it in, man. Look, you got panels. Exactly. It's velvet on the wall. That's a velvet <laughs> wall. <laughs> You know, this is only finest of the finest. We, put, we spent a lot of money on this. Mm -hmm. A lot of money on these chairs, the green chairs. All of it. It's all a lot of money. Okay. I don't like how we both rubbing the chair. <laughs> you got to rub it. It's right there. <laughs> <laughs> all this, okay. We're not going to have an interview be like this. <laughs> Yo, it's so bright in here. You got the sunglasses on inside. I noticed that you wear a lot of sunglasses. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Is that like your thing? Like your favorite accessory is to have a nice pair of frames? Well, a lot of people don't notice I have an eye sensitivity. Ah. So I have to wear something or I'm going to be squinting the whole time. Wow. The lights mm -hmm. are not bothering you, right? No, no, no. But that's why I like to... Um, I used to wear my dark circle frames, mm -hmm. but then I can't see inside at all. Ah. So that's why I got like a clear frame so I could still... like It just reflects a little bit of the light. Or I'll be in here kind of like... Looking my eyes won't the whole time I thought they were just like for I mean I guess they for both I mean yeah it's definitely for fashion too though but you definitely have shout out to Marco the curator these some classic gazelles right here there we go you mm -hmm. always have a nice pair of frames but now we know why he wears these frames that's yeah. all we need to know because if I don't I'm being here like this like a blind man you mean you are older old seasoned as you older people like say seasoned man you old you I'm, I ain't even hit 30 yet yeah yeah we ain't get there yet Wow. That's not a here nor there. Welcome to another episode of Live with Lamar. I'm your host, Lamar Robinson, and with me is the amazing, the great, the magnificent, my mentor, my big brother, DJ Damage. Yes, thank you, thank Welcome you, thank you. Set. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited for this interview, man. I'm excited. We're going to dive into a lot of things. I definitely want to start here, though, because mm -mm. the way you became my mentor was through your media course, mm -hmm. which I joined back in 2020, in the middle of the pandemic. A lot of y'all spent y'all stem the wrong way <laughs> i just spent it and to be where i'm at today to curate this set he spent it on a black owned business yes i did and a master class i took a chance you remember you remember our call we had on the phone mm -hmm. and i was like i was like yeah i'm just a little nervous like i don't know i spent so much money on this program and like i don't need you trying to scam me mm -hmm. that was my thought but it ended up being like magnificent what made you start the legendary media group I feel like throughout my uh, my journey, I've always been helping people, whether it's an intern or somebody just work, maybe where I work at, mm -hmm. and they wanted some advice. So kind of like, um, it was a guy that came on Hollywood Unlocked. He was like teaching and you know selling courses or whatever. And I was like, that's dope for you. He was like, no, you should actually do it. And I'm just like, nah, I don't see why it makes sense. And he convinced nice. me why it makes even more sense for me to do it than him to do it. Absolutely. And he was very successful. He was like, I mean, you know, this is really something you're passionate about. You have an expertise. A lot of people want to do this. And you're in a lane that a lot of people don't know how to navigate. So it just made sense. And I really wholeheartedly want people to win, too. That's true. Like, I care about that more than anything. Like, the money, the money don't really do nothing for me. It's really about watching somebody like you create your own set and do everything we talked about mm -hmm. to win. So, and I think that's probably what really motivated me. Just really coming up always talking to people, taking that time out to talk on the phone and talk people through things. And I think it's just what I love to do. I think that's like my calling for life. I love helping people. Absolutely. And and you've had what, two, three cohorts, cohorts of this program already? Yeah. So one before. It was my, three, definitely three. three. So you, I know it was mine and then we <clears throat> merged with another group mm -hmm. and then, which was your second. I think you had one prior. Yeah, to I had that. one that wasn't like an official group yet that we had Zoom calls and everything. It was gotcha. kind of like just a few scattered people. Flow with that. So mm -hmm. what do you? So would you be my mentor? And you watched me grow. You know, you seen me come from Florida to out here. What would you say has been the biggest? Uh, how do I want to word this? 
I don't want to say the things you're most proud of me. I mean, I am a great ass nigga. You know, it's just a lot to be proud of. <laughs> a great <laughs> ass <Man>. nigga. <laughs> All that. So what we are live with Lamar right now. He I say got, whatever you want. Got it. What do you think has been my biggest improvement to this day for? If you had to pick, pinpoint one thing from when you first met me and I'm in your Zoom class to right now. What yeah, would that be? definitely like taking that suit off. Oh yeah, the suit was different. You did not like the suit. He used to wear the suit, and it was, it was, it was. He hated the suit. I'm not gonna say I hated it. He, he was like, "Are yeah. you?" Try, he always used to be like, "Are you trying to like be on the news or something? Like, why you got this suit on?" And I was like, "I don't know. Like, you know, I'm thinking interviewing, being professional, you know." Yeah, I but it. he was like, "Nah, fam. Like, it's not. It's not given." It's not doing what it's supposed to do. That's it. I think you just, you had a personality that I would see on the group call that I wouldn't see represented he definitely said in that. your content. That was it. He definitely said that. Yeah, that was it. Like, but it wasn't like I didn't like the suit. I just didn't feel like you were the, the suit. Because there's nothing wrong with wearing the suit. Absolutely. But it was just like, but when we on the call, you yeah, like, you know, another person. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was, the I think, the biggest improvement. Just you learning how to be more of yourself and letting that be the content. And that's hard. Too. Very hard. I think it's easy to go on any camera and especially when you don't do this, like put on a persona like, yo, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to like show up as yourself and as just yourself. be like, this is who I am. And you know, and that I'm was like, the key too, because I've learned that like even through our, our courses, it was like everybody wanted to, you know, it's always like you, there was always like a niche or like a certain lane of how to be a personality, mm -hmm. whether you're TV, radio, or podcast. But the key was always just be who you are. What do, what do you show up as every day? What do you naturally like to do? And how do you like, that's like the easiest content to pursue. And I think that was like what I had to understand is like how, how are you around your friends or how are you on our calls? Like mm -hmm. that is typically like what you're supposed to be. When you try to be a personality or like someone else that's already doing it, it kind of like comes off inauthentic. And I think that was like. And nobody want to watch. It's boring, right? Yeah. Like. It's one thing if you're watching like um, you're watching basketball and at the end of the game somebody's doing that interview and that's like cool for that moment. Yes. But when you hear like sports commentators, they at certain points like they just letting it all hang out. Absolutely. Of course, it's still a to professional level, but you kind of understand everybody's they personality, are. especially when you think about like a Charles Barkley or Stephen A. Who be yelling? You know, you getting their personality. If they were up there the whole time, like. Oh, oh, yeah, it's kind of like you don't really get a you can't connect to it because it's like. Whether you like it or don't like it, you don't have a reaction at all. And that's the one thing you don't want when you do anything. If no one's reacting at all, then you're doing it wrong. Do you feel like the, in the industry has become a little bit more accepting of people kind of like being able to showcase their personality a little bit more? Mm -hmm. Like, do you feel like it used to be a staple of like, this is clean cut and dry, but yeah. now it's a bit more like. And I think it'll come back to it. I think it has waves. You know, mm -hmm. it has waves. It's going to be a time where it's like, you know, everything is super buttoned up and clean and then it's going to be like, there's going to be something to revolt against that mm -hmm. and it's going to be cool to be super raw and authentic and it's always going to go around and around. Yeah. It's always going to be like that. So I got ever going in circles. And I feel like, I say that now because, now I feel like because there's so much podcasts and so many platforms, now people are craving for something a little bit more organized and buttoned up because everybody's just doing everything. Absolutely. Right? Um, so that's why I say it's always going to be like a cycle. Do you feel like, so I like how you said you brought up podcasts and you mentioned everybody's doing it. Everybody now has a voice. Mm -hmm. Everybody has something to say. Do you feel like that's a good thing or bad thing? You've been doing this for quite some time and you've seen the then and now the now and now everybody has a podcast. Everybody mm -hmm. has a show. Everybody feels like they have a voice. Do you feel like that's a good thing, a bad thing? Does everybody need to have a voice? Everybody need to have a podcast? No, but I think um, it's good for people like you mm -hmm. because... Now you have something to um, compare. Mm. Like, there's a lot of bad podcasts, so then you'll appreciate a good one. Yeah. You know? It's kind of like, if you're a guy in the dating scene, it's a lot of lames mm -hmm. out. Like, say you go to the club, it's, oh, it's a bunch of lames out here. Oh, yeah, so when you step words. in, you're going to feel good because it's like, oh, a real one about to walk through. Yes. So I'm glad these lames are here so the, the ladies will know. They can, can easily see, see, oh, this is official. Right. Like, this is official. So there's a lot of people out there and you know, and kudos to them because it's it's a, a growing and learning experience too. So I'm never gonna tell somebody not to do something, but yeah. it's good. Like if you got a bad podcast or whatever, it don't matter because the ones that are good will stand out. And the one, and people that put that consistency, um, that are working hard, it will it will shine eventually. So Do you have any favorite podcasts out? Do oh man, a lot. Uh I like the Joe Button podcast, I like See the Thing Is, I like Hollywood Unlocked, I like Shout out to Hollywood Unlocked. Um, um, 
I like a few. Uh, it's one called Black Renaissance that I listened to. What's that one about? That sounds interesting. It's like a, a finance one. It's ah, it's a good Yeah, one. yeah. And it's another one. It's a wife and a husband. Oh, is it like his and her money? Something like that. Um, there's a few for sure. There's Earn Your Leisure. Leisure. I like Earn Your Leisure. Leisure. Of course, Earn Your Leisure. Uh, Philly, Million Dollars Worth of Game. I like them. I like them. Shout out yeah. to Wallow and Gilly. So, yeah, it's a few. One of my favorites is Drink Champs. Oh, my God. I'm tripping. I love Drink Champs. Drink Champs. I like Yes, I like. He's fucking phenomenal. I always knew of him. He's hilarious. But I had a chance to actually get to know him because I watch his interviews mm -hmm. faithfully. And like you mentioned, there's so many different podcasts, but you kind of you get a chance to kind of see what you like and what you don't like. Mm -hmm. And I got into a phase where I now watch interviews faithfully, so I can learn and pick up different things to make my podcast and my show better. And Dream Champs is one of my favorite ones. I love I love their guests. I love how they conduct their interviews. Nori's fucking amazing. Like that is definitely one podcast. Like. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna watch like I love it yeah no shout out to Nori I can't believe I forgot that it's so many though it's, it's so more many. it's more I'm forgetting right now like there's more that I like but I like people having conversations I like different conversations different points of view so mm -hmm. uh, if you have a dream of doing a podcast and you really are passionate about it do it do it why not that being said are you bringing back LMG because we've been talking about this for since I moved out here uh, I, I, I've been thinking about it. people that's trying to... And when he says LMG, it's Legendary Media Group. That's yes. the program he was in. I've been thinking about it. Uh, I'm taking my time because it's a lot. It's a lot dealing with a lot of different personalities. Weekly calls. Yeah, it was a lot. Every Sunday. But I, I do want to do it. So I'm thinking about it. And then also I have to change the program a little you bit because well. the time has changed. Mm -hmm. Right? So I think it needs to be more lean into how to create your own platform. So yeah, so I definitely want to do it. Can be multiple things besides just you know on this side and one lane. So I think that is a, a good way to spend it because yeah, it, so you may want to do a an online magazine type shit. So it, yeah, so I definitely do want to do it, but then it's gonna take some back end, like a few months to kind of create the back end mm -hmm. to then have the Zoom calls and blah 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 blah. Y'all don't care about this stuff. When it launches again, we'll tell you about it. We do care, and if you want to be on it, you want to <laughs> definitely follow and definitely keep up with DJ Damage because. The course was phenomenal. I'm not just saying it because he's here. I definitely learned a lot. I mean, it drove me out out of Florida and brought me to LA. So it did something right. It definitely gave me the push I needed and I feel like I've had a chance to, to thrive. But I know a lot about you and I've had a chance to get to know you a little bit more. But for those who don't know who DJ Damage is, please let them know who you are. That's that was very, that's a lot. Yeah, uh, who you are. You do a lot of things, I'm a lot DJ, of hats. I'm DJ Damage. I am um, a Libra. <laughs> yeah, Libra. Shout out to Libras. Hey, you're very balanced. Even person, though we I'm looking crazy right now, we are <laughs> taking some L's in public. Scorpio game. No, um, how would I, how would I um, explain this? I guess um, I'm a DJ. I, yes, you I'm are. A personality. I'm a father first. You are a father. I am a free spirit. You just describe yourself as a free spirit? For sure. Really? For sure. And I need to work on that. <laughs> Own into a I little need, bit more. Yeah, I need to. Okay, I need that's to be what more intentional. Okay, there we go. Because I was about to say, would you? Everybody can't live like this, y'all. <laughs> I lived a very unintentional life and still have <laughs> succeeded at things. But you need. Right? Everybody should be intentional. Do not do what I do. Do what I say. <laughs> <laughs> that's my 2022 word. What intention? It's important. It's very important. But I, I had to realize through the time how unintentional I was. Like I have intentions. Like I manifest things, but. Mm -hmm. I, uh, my only intention was to be a DJ on the radio. Everything else after that has been extra credit. That just came along. That the was the only intention I had. You never know how your role is going to pay you out. Your role, I feel like, it's took all these different. Because I'm here. Because I have no intention. It's like oh, I'll just go with the wind. Oh, what's going on over here? And then I'll just mold into it, which is good and bad, maybe in a way. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm I'm flexible. Yeah. So there's that. So do you feel like from, because you started in radio and then you mm -hmm. went to Revo, was after that? Did it follow yep. immediately after that? What do you think that was that biggest transition coming from, like, would you not knowing? Did you know that Revo was going to come or was Revo one of those things to where it just kind of like? No, I mean, it's a really, it's a very long story too. It's an interesting story because um, when I was doing radio, for lack of better words, my rival DJ's manager that, so the DJ was on the other station's uh -huh. manager was the one that connected me with the people to do um, 106 and Park. So you were on 106 and Park? Yeah. So what happened was I was doing 106 and Park. That was dope. I was there. Um, I did a few. Shout out to 106. Yeah, I did a, do, a few guest hostings or whatever, but mostly like DJing. Yeah. 
And it was at a point where they were like, oh, you know, they randomly called me just to do some guest DJing again and hosting with Pageon. They were like, yo, you about to meet the D's and the new host of 106 and Park. Y'all gonna see them next year? And I was just like, word. <laughs> and then what happened was they never called me back. I'd never been to 106 and Park after they said that. Damn. And then eventually they did the, like that big global casting where Correct. they were looking for. But what happened was when they started Revolt TV, a lot of people from 106 and Park went to Revolt. Mm. And oh, yes. my name was brought up there, and they were like, "Yo, it was a guy that we were supposed to have at 106 in Park," and that's kind of like how that happened. That makes sense. So a lot of your L's can be W's if you just see it through. You just gotta see it. If you have to see it through, see a lot through, of L's boy. turn into W's. Wow. I don't know what it looked like visually, but yeah, two L, two L's can make a W. See like that, bye y'all. But you gotta see it through. I remember when I first came across with damage. I was at Revolt Music Conference. Mm -hmm. I was at Revolt Music Conference. I seen you and um, I can't remember her name at the top of my head. Sibley? White, white girl. Oh, Hannah. With the cool hair. She had the dopest haircut. I seen him. I went out of Revolt. I remember going out there in Miami and I seen I was like, wow, this is really cool. Like, really cool. Like, they're doing cuts and doing stuff on TV. And, you know, it's actual live. And I seen damage. So I'm like trying to network, right? I'm really trying to network, but I'm nervous as hell. I don't know who to talk to people. I'm like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> so damage is like this. He's like sitting behind um, the set or behind the stage. And I'm like on the side. <laughs> and I see damage. I'm trying to talk to the man. So I'm like, psst, psst, to this man right here. I'm like, psst. And he look, and I'm like, damage look at me. He's like, nigga, he's like, you, you come here. What you mean? Like, come here. Like, what up? Why is this man? <laughs> Pissing at me and <laughs> telling me to come here. What is he trying to do? Because I was nervous. I don't know. I didn't. What is he trying to do? Yo, come here. Come here. Like no. That was. Yeah, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I would never do it again. Knowing what I know now, but back then I was nervous. I'm like, this man's on TV. Like I don't know. Like I was nervous as hell. I was like, it make it easier just to come. <laughs> come What's wrong with him? I'm leaning behind him like, Psst. damn, he's looking. <laughs> And here we are now, seven years later. Put your hand down. Don't, don't, don't do that hand motion when I'm around. Yeah. I don't like this that. This whole time, if y'all don't knew, like this hand this motion. This whole thing is been happening. I'm sorry, bro. What's wrong with you? And I'm not even drinking. By the way, guys, I'm on a I'm cleanse. I'm actually the one drinking. I am on a cleanse. I'm on a cleanse after this. I am on a cleanse. So I'm living it up today. I have not had alcohol in 20 days. So this it ain't good. It, it, I miss alcohol. Wow, look at that, yum. <laughs> Damn tequila. But you drink more than me. Wow, you think so? Yeah. How you know? Cause you have a good time. I have an amazing time. Sometimes I may not be drinking a lot. No, you drink more than me. My friends think I drink a lot. That's why I'm on this cleanse for the next twenty days. This is a forty day cleanse. I'll be back. There we go. At least you drinking and taking shots, even without me having to tell you. So I love that. Oh yeah, I'm a drink. Dang, thank you. I'm Today. a drink. Thank you. This is my finale. This is it. Uh, look at that. I'm so glad to have you taking your last drinks on live with Lamar set. We we appreciate that so much. It's a moment. Thank you. I appreciate it. You mentioned you were a father. Mm -hmm. The nice little navigation. And <laughs> that was the navigation. Yep. <laughs> we're gonna get to you about you being a father because I'm not gonna get over that. And I absolutely love the relationship you have with your son. Mm -hmm. Those of you guys know I have a very my dad wasn't there. Boo-hoo, sad, sad shit. He wasn't there. And so when I'm able to see black fathers step up and do their things and do what they're supposed to do, it's really amazing. And you showcase your relationship with your son through programming and campaigns and through your social media. I've been around you and your son, and it's not it's like a part of you. When you go to DJ Damage's page, you know that he's a father, and you know he loves his son, Legend. Mm -hmm. So what does fatherhood mean to you? Why is it so important for you to show up? I think it's just another level of uh, mentorship. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important if you have a younger version of yourself to kind of lace them with the right tools to succeed. Because like you said, you didn't have your dad, I didn't mm -hmm. have my dad. So we kind of had to figure it out as we go. And I don't feel like that's necessarily, the world ain't fair, but it's not necessarily fair. Correct. You should have somebody at least give you some tools for you to use and you build whatever you want with them, right? right. So I don't try to guide my son to do anything. Of course, you know, morally correct things, but correct. it's like, look, I'm gonna give you these tools and then show me what you can build with it so you can grow up and show me something. Yeah. So I think it's just like another level of mentorship, to be honest. Like, I think that's why I take it so, um, I take it to heart like that. Of course, because it's my blood, it's my kid, I love him. But on top of that, it's like, okay, you're guiding another young male mm -hmm. in this world and 
young men build society. So are you going to raise somebody that doesn't contribute or you want to raise somebody that's going to contribute and do something amazing that can help our community? Right. And I feel like I come from a place or a religion or a background that's bigger than ourselves. You know, we, we're about culture, we're about community. Mm-hmm. So it's like, what are you going to add to the community? What are you going to be that's going to add for the enrichment of our community? It's important. And I feel like with today's time, and it's nobody's fault because it's like spoon fed to you. Everybody's an individual. And that makes you a slave. Yeah. That makes you a slave. If you only think about yourself, you're going to be a slave to everything. When you think about your community, your people, something that's bigger than you, you can rise above, you can change, you can make change. Think about voting. If we all were just individualists, we can't vote to make any kind of change. And I'm not even talking about the political sense. If us in this room was like, yo, we want to have hamburgers or hot dogs. We, if we made a vote, we have to work together, you know what I mean, yeah. to make that leverage. If everybody just has their own point of view, which is okay, yeah. but it's like you kind of get nowhere. And I think we're just at that point. So it's like um, when it comes to fatherhood, it's like, okay, I want to raise somebody that's going to grow up, feel good about themselves. What can they add to society that's helpful? And just have the right tools. And that's it. Yeah. I'm just going to give you the right tools. You do what you want to do with it. Do you find it difficult raising a son in 2022? No. Do you find the, the rules and, like, I feel like there's always a staple of fatherhood and what it meant to be a dad and how you should raise your son, sons particularly. Do you find it difficult or how do you navigate with allowing Legend to, like, let his mind just wander to be wherever the hell he decides to show up as every day? Uh, well, I think that's dangerous mm. because that's what, that's what you have parents for. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think having... Um, what would you call it? Having an imagination is beautiful, but it still has to be to a limit where, and that's what that's where you come in as parenting. You kind of like it's like when you bowling and they have the little guards for the kids. That's all it is. Like the ball, let the ball bounce around, <laughs> but just don't go outside these parameters. This like is, don't, get, you go, don't get too crazy. experimental. Where you now you you're doing crack. This is, this you know? <laughs> right, you stay within. Yeah, let's legs, stay right? here. Like let like let your mind. We're not gonna do crack. crack. We're not gonna do experiment. That. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not experimenting with crack, and we're not doing bath salts. Definitely not. Yeah, so it's I, I, so yeah, it's. I mean, I feel like it's always a hard time to be a parent. I don't yeah. think it was ever ever, and especially as black men, I don't feel like there's ever been a moment where it's been easy to be a parent. I think right now might be a little bit more easy because there's a lot of information out there, so. Um, you can tell your child something and he can go on his own and do the research mm-hmm. quicker and go, okay. Basically, he got his phone in his hand. He yeah, it's like, okay, daddy it said this, does it make sense to me? He can get other points of views on it and then kind of through time decipher how he feels about it. So I think it's a great time to be a dad. You got any more kids coming on the way? Nope. You're going to be like, Nick, how, how do you feel about it? I mean, not that you give a damn. I mean, that's what he chooses to do. But Nick Cannon got like eight kids. Mm-hmm. Then he got like a, and he got like another one on the way, I believe. He got, he got a lot of kids going on. Yeah, he do. Uh, yeah, a lot. Uh, do you ever see yourself having that many kids if you ever decide to have more? I don't have Nick Cannon money, so I can't even fathom that. <laughs> I can't fathom it. If I had Nick Cannon money, maybe. Maybe you would build a dynasty of a bunch of I, I don't. I don't think I, I want to be with a, one person, ideally, mm-hmm. right? And some people don't. And I don't think there's either wrong or right. Yeah. So with Nick's point of view, I think that works for him. As long as he's in those kids, that's all I care about. I care about the kids. Yeah. I don't care about nobody else but the kids. As long as the kids are growing up and they have a father figure, then why not? I mean, he definitely, I think, I definitely can see. I don't know Nick personally. It seems like he's in his kids' lives. And he's like, he's a great father. And that's something we honestly will never know. Right. Right. Until but, somebody do a tell on him. Like, he was never there. It's a lie. It's a scam. And, but then you know you know how that goes. There's always it always that's the but then I, then mind. but then you kind of signed up for it. You like don't sign up for something and then do a tell all. <laughs> I don't like that. You know everybody get clout. No, that's weird. That's weird. <laughs> I'm not saying anybody's wrong or right, but don't sign up for the Nick Cannon program and then get mad and don't go the way you want and then want to tell everybody's business. That's just tacky. No, I personally don't like that. That's fair. That's fair enough. But y'all. Um, you were formerly on Hollow Unlock. Mm-hmm. Um, Hollow Unlock has done its farewell, and mm-hmm. Jason's out there doing big things and you know, interviewing people. Now we have the Hollow Unlock Studios. And I, I pivot to this because we mentioned, you know, your transition and kind of how you kind of just landed in different spots and different joints. Mm-hmm. And I feel like Hollow Unlock was another one of those. I'm like, boom. Sure was. I'm on TV. I'm a, what was that journey for you overall with being a part of the Hollow Unlock? I think it was amazing. I think it was much needed. And that's why sometimes you got to. 
sometimes you got to play the back seat to your life you know mm. like sometimes you got to just let life take you somewhere because you don't know what you can learn so from the kind of i would say hosting and media that i was into it was kind of like how it used to be with lava lamar it was kind of like even though i wasn't wearing a suit it was still very curated and whatever I wasn't used to telling my personal opinion on things mm -hmm. ever. I never mm -hmm. had to. I could hide behind so many things. I'm just doing an interview and it's like, oh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we're done. So that was the first instance of me having to speak on things as me, you know? Yeah. And that was a very huge learning. And it took a long time, right? Because I could ad lib you talking about some shit, but it's like, well, what are you thinking? I'm just like, Shit, now I got to buy how I feel. <laughs> and, it might, and people might not like it. And then you have to get through that level of people not liking what you're saying. That's hard. Yeah. Especially with social media and so many people could just bash you. Mm -hmm. Man, we've been attacked by Ariana Grande fans, the Nate, all types of fan base. I've been, my son been called all different types of things. Still to this day, I could read something weird about somebody saying something about me and my son. And I'm just like, what? I didn't even do anything. I didn't even do anything. I just was there. I haven't been on no me. podcast lately. What are you talking about? Um, but it was a learning experience to learn like how to just be unapologetically you. Mm -hmm. And Jason is, Don't and that's no the thing. And, and it's weird balances because from the outside looking in, if you know my background, you would never think I would be paired with somebody like Jason. Absolutely. And people probably look at Jason like, how did you pair with damage? Correct. But it made sense. It made sense. We balanced each other out. So it was a really great, really great learning. I'm very thankful for that. And then also, um, a lot of people just want to be the man. And I think May said this recently, like you can't be the man if you don't come up under people that are the man, right? Correct. So I was able to be to ride shotgun for a lot of successful people from QDZ when I was in Philly, mm -hmm. Um, when I was in radio, QDZ worked at Big Boy's Morning Show and okay. came back to Philly and had his own show and he made me his DJ. But the wealth of information from coming from LA to Philly, mind you, I'd never been to LA yet. Mm -hmm. The things he was telling me, I was just like, oh, okay, okay. He was giving me the game. To then go on working with Puff and working with people at Revolt and working with people like Tuma who runs YouTube now, oh, wow. but created Rap Caviar. Uh, I got to work with so many important people at Revolt that blossomed to do amazing things. Sometimes you gotta really just take the back seat and kinda enjoy the ride and learn from the experience. And it's really something to say to not rush your moment because you miss it. A lot of people that want things to happen right now, when you have something that you want happen right now, you become, I'm trying to find the right word. A lot of times when you get success too quick, you just get used, right? Because mm -hmm. you have no relationships. So people don't really like you for you, they like you for what you can do for them. And it's scary. But when you take that slow grind, along the way you're meeting people that's also in their grind and you're building legit relationships for if you fall, if you tilt over, whatever happens, you're around a community of people that know who you are. So it's really important to take your time in that journey and i think you are a testament to that right yeah absolutely think about it you you're, you're taking your time and look at all the connections you've built since then me mal even working with what you're doing with like uh with b hens thing mm -hmm. all those people you're meeting Love it's that. a long-term ground all those individuals were like oh lamar i remember you i met you in dc when you were doing this mm -hmm. now you're doing this and then i've seen you doing that mm -hmm. they're watching you grow and then that's what's going to help you um that's gonna help you, period, in this game. This is like a 10 year game. And creating value. I think that's one thing Malachi always taught me was the importance of creating value. Like, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. you know, all your connections from radio to Revo is gonna, you know, people always remember how great you were and mm -hmm. what you did and making a smile. But maybe that one day and you didn't think anything of it, but that as long as you remain valuable, you'll almost always have an opportunity. Almost always have a You job. won't always be valuable, though. Okay. You will not you always be valuable. You, you won't that? be. And that's why you need community. <clears throat> You won't be. Mm. You won't like. There's always going to be. Think about some of your favorite artists, right? Mm -hmm. There's a point where they start to decline. They're not valuable, but guess what? They have an impact where they can grab onto somebody that's hot, or somebody you know that they might have influence that might be doing the thing right now, and they can help bring them back up. You're not always going to be valuable, okay, that's and that's just how this game goes. Entertainment is a roller coaster. Roller coaster. And if you're banking on always being the man then you're you're betting to lose 
I can believe that because everybody, there's everybody's been a man at one point in time, and then like they're no longer the man. You know, they had to pivot or they had to figure out something else because it's like you can't bank on it. Entertainment industry, you really can't. Literally, tomorrow can be like. But what they say, the same people say on the, the way up, you see on the way down. Yes. But it's how you treat those people. So, if you on your way down, but you treat everybody great, or one or two people that really respect you and they have influence, they can help keep you afloat until you figure your thing out. And I always said this to y'all when we did uh, the Legendary Media course. I said, yo, one day I'm going to need y'all help. Mm -hmm. Didn't I always say that? I said, y'all going to have a platform that's booming. I'm going to need you to help. I'm going to need to come on your thing. Yes. And it's no ego about that. I'm going to need that. And vice versa. One day you're going to get to a certain level. I mean, hopefully we always, always ascend, but it's not realistic. Yeah. So you're going to need somebody to kind of lean on. And that's natural. That's just life. So I know you do hosting, but you're also a DJ. Yeah, so you DJ a, a phenomenal event every Wednesday here in Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> Brown Sugar. <laughs> yeah. Brown Sugar at the Continental Club every Wednesday. I, I've heard this a lot because I'm new to LA. I've only been here for a year and a half, and everybody says that LA different. Outside is different, you know, I guess since the pandemic. You've been here for how many years? Ten years. Ten years? Then you old. So, like, um, how do, you, do you feel like outside has changed since the ten years you've been here? Yeah, it's gotten better. It gotten better. You okay? That's the first I've heard that. Most people say something negative, like, "Oh, it ain't the same." I mean, they still be outside in the club right next to me, but they say it's different. I think it's better. I think it's more cultural. I think there's more genres of music being played. Mm. I think there's definitely more vibes for different styles of people because before, like, you know how far you had to go to maybe find a reggae party or Afrobeat party. You had to travel to some weird. I can go up the street to go to a nice little reggae. Yeah, like you had to go some weird area of L.A. Uh, and I ain't gonna say it's weird. It's just an area that if you're not from here, you're not used to going to. Mm. Um, I feel like it's definitely more has more of that East Coast balance when it comes to music genres. So I think, I personally, I think it's better. The East Coast seems to very like take over the West Coast. Like y'all out here. Mm-hmm. Where are you from? Come on, y'all. South. Well, yeah, it's a difference. I don't, I don't, I don't, it's a difference. Yeah, he's from Tallahassee, so. <laughs> Pensacola. <laughs> Same difference. What is that? It's that like sound like something like you remember? Y'all remember the Mighty Ducks? <laughs> they were from all them weird places. I'm from Pensacola, Pensacola. Minneapolis. Like <laughs> Pensacola. Yeah. You know, it's the South, but the East Coast seemed to be very prominent over here. You know, you got Philly and DC, DMV, Maryland. I think more so the DMV is very heavy. Very prominent. I think the East Coast is here, but the East Coast isn't together, right? Mm. But the DMV, all the DMV people rock together. I love that. Do you feel like any, what music, well, what coast of music or area of music do you think thrives the most out here in LA that you feel like you hear the most of? I think the South is still taking over, like, the music scene. But I feel like in LA, if you go to like um, the club clubs, it's a lot of West Coast young artists really getting they 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 thing going. Mm. Like a lot of them. Like I'm hearing a lot of like that West Coast cadence, and it kind of sounds a little bit like that Detroit stuff. But yeah, like a lot of these clubs now are playing a lot of West Coast artists, which I love because you never want to go to a town and hear everybody else's music. Like yeah. if I'm going to Florida or Pensacola, wherever that is. <laughs> I want to hear like Pensacola kind of music. Oh no, I don't want to hear Pensacola kind of music. But I do. Like I don't no, want to come to your town no, you and don't. hear my music from Philly. That's you don't weird. Want to hear. No, no, no. First off, actually, if you go to Pensacola, you're gonna hear Pensacola music because Pensacola is not cultured. What do you mean it's not culture? They don't know nothing of that. I so I'm born and raised in Pensacola, right? And you mentioned music mm-hmm. and like. I didn't really get exposed to like all the down south music. I mean, I knew Trina and Trick Daddy. That was like, that did come up that way. But there's a lot of music like Tampa and shit I did not know, or Jacksonville or Orlando or whatever that didn't that didn't make, or shit, even Afrobeats and Island music and shit didn't make its way up to Florida. So I went to college. When I went to college, a lot of my friends were from down south and they're from central Florida. And so I got exposed to all this island music and all these different rappers that are from these different areas. And I'm like, so wow. So it was just T Pain for y'all. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and cash money and you know that's juvenile bad, and T Pain ain't bad. You no. know that's what we had up there. It's the same little radio shit. We didn't really have no dancing up there. You know they juking shit down in the South Florida. I mean they weren't doing that up there. Time mm-hmm. went to college, so like around 2012, 2013, so I'm old. Shit started to change. I pray for you, man. I pray for myself too. So no, you don't want to go to Pensacola and hear Pensacola music. I promise you, you'll be like, what the fuck is this? Honestly, you would probably never go to Pensacola. You're right. I ain't no reason to go there at all. I don't even go there. I haven't been there in a year. And I only go back because I got family there. 
I agree. <laughs> I agree. I have no I have no objections to that. I love this. I won't ever go. Don't ever go. You're right. No, you have no reason to go. And any of my post call friends that may watch this, y'all should feel inside way. I know it's the truth. <laughs> He's from there, so like Y'all don't care what I think. He's from there. It's, it, it's not. It's just not a great area to go to. That's all I'm saying. Okay. You know, but you know, back to the topic of music. <laughs> that's called. Y'all got way too much shine for me right in there. Too much shine. Do you have any favorite artists currently? Like, who do you rock to? Like, if I got in your car and your and your Bluetooth hooked up, what's the first thing that's probably gonna pop up? The first thing that's gonna pop up is Afro Beats. Okay. Come on, I love Afro Beats. You from Pensacola? You don't know about that. I've learned. And I appreciate it. But um, favorite artist is Currently. Kodak, Kanye, Drake, Jay Z. I listen to a lot of Jay Z. Kodak was first. Yeah, Kodak is fire. Um, wow, Jada Kiss. Jada Kiss is fire. Griselda. You like Fabulous? Yeah, I like Fabulous. I, Fabulous. I don't listen to Fabulous a lot, though. But I like Fabulous. If he dropped more music, I'll listen to him more. Hmm. Um, Griselda. I like Yo Gotti. I like Yo Gotti's Camp. I like Moneybag Yo, I like ESTG. I don't listen to them a lot though. Okay. I think like, I like all types of music. Like I'll definitely be on a binge if I'm in the car and listen to everything. But I think if you were to be like, yo, what are you going to listen to right now if I'm on a road trip? It's definitely going to be Nas. It's going to be Griselda. It's going to be Jay-Z. It's like that kind of rap. Sounds it's going like to be Pusha T. Sounds like your pocket. When yeah. You said Kodak, it just kind of like threw me off. No, I like Kodak a lot though. Like, I'd be better. That's cute. I'm gonna make sure we have cute. Team. Yeah, might be better. Um, shows that you're 22. <laughs> It'd be like that's, that's, I come from a background of working with a certain population, so they kind of just like, I just can't. Yeah. Young boy. Young boy. <laughs> Live with young boy. Live with young boy. Listen, I'm gonna get young boy on the set one day. Young men TV. I'm gonna get. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna get young boy on the set one day. Yeah. You really? Yeah. Please, I hope you get to interview him. I really won't want to. Like nobody, I feel like nobody will give him a chance. I would love to have Wabi here, so y'all can actually learn about my guy. That's my cousin. That's my little cousin. That's what's up. Yeah, you know. I'm proud of you. Thank you, bro. I'm so proud that you're proud of me. <laughs> <laughs> We're here with the official young boy. Young boy fans. That's that's me. But I but I will say this because I, I have this question because you do D, you you know you you do music. You're a DJ. You've done radio from philly you're out here in la and hip-hop has done a lot of different changes and things mm -hmm. of that nature um you know we got <clears throat> like ysl situation going on going on right now we have lyrics and the decision about whether or not lyrics should be used in court we got deaths left and right there's a lot of different things that are going on and with someone that's been in the game for some time what's your outlook on the state of hip-hop that's such a broad question my outlook on the state of hip-hop which is primarily um, taken over by drill music. Mm. I don't support drill music. Mm -hmm. I don't see the benefit of it. Mm -hmm. But I'm also getting to that point in my life where I'm noticing the impact of our art, right? Mm -hmm. So people are, oh, it's just music, blah, blah, blah. No, it used to be just music. These guys aren't professional artists that go to the studio every day and have a dream of you know, getting a Grammy. And they're writing camps and locking nah, stuff. No, it's an outlet for them to deal with kind of like they street stuff. And ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But the problem is other people are being influenced by it. And a lot of people try to equate music to television and like, oh, it's just entertainment. The thing is, when you watch a movie, you know it's fake. Yes. The thing about hip hop that we know, and I know we try to tell a different story to the outsiders, it's like, we thrive off it being authentic. If it ain't authentic, we don't want to hear it. Big facts. And for me, I'm just at a point in my life personally where I can't listen to a song where they're just talking about killing somebody over and over and over and over. Because I'm not about to go outside and kill nobody. So why do I need that to be influenced on my spirit? It's low vibrational. I don't personally like it. And I'm watching when it's doing to the city I grew up in. Mm -hmm. now, all the kids is drilling and shooting other kids. We're listening to music of kids talking about killing other kids. Or we'll probably tell them how to kill another kid. That's wild to me. They be doing I don't want to hear that. Like I know. What is that? And you know, I and I, I and I listen to a lot of that music. And I, I can't necessarily say why. I mean I do enjoy it. But the thing for me is not that I enjoy what they're saying. I think I really enjoy just the beats. But I'm it not really judging hype. someone liking the music, right? Okay. It's bigger than that. It's not like, oh, how could you listen to it? Uh, but it's Maybe. like, 
when you take a step back and look at what it's doing, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, all right, bro, this is like, it's going too far. We're losing too many of our people. And I don't care what anybody say, that has a direct correlation to it. Everywhere drill has gone, you've seen a lot of deaths from Chicago to New York, to the Bronx, to Philly, to even, man, parts of North uh, North uh, Florida. Yeah, down in They drilling over there. That's crazy. Exactly. Like, Texas, come on, man. Texas is getting it. And we got to stop. I ain't going to say we got to stop. I'm not supporting um, the genocide of black men. So mm-hmm. I'm, I can't rock with it. I really can't. Like, back in when I was coming up, not that I'm that old, but in the 2000s, you had at least a variety of music. Yeah, you had music like that, but you also had fun music. You had crunk music. You had a, a variation. Right now, it's like it's over dominated by just kill them, shoot them up. Ops. Young men music. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's dark. So, I'm not supporting that. So we so Gucci Mane recently released a track called "This in the Dead," and 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 he's basically you know talking to the young bulls, you know, young bulls. See what I did there? Talking to them about stopping you know, killing each other and changing their language and et cetera, et cetera. But he's also got kind of a pushback. Some, some. Why? Because they feel like he's Why? critical. How? Because of what his past looked like. And they feel like he- His has, past. Correct. What about today? Absolutely. That's crazy. Big facts. So you mad at a man that sat there and looked at his ways and said, I'm going to change because I influence so many people indirectly. Because mm-hmm. a lot of these kids don't know they influenced by Gucci Mane and Lil Wayne. Big they facts. don't even know it. Yep. Because their fans- of people that was fans of fans of fans of people of those like like that. Like a lot of people don't even know they looking like Lil Wayne. A lot of people don't know they they talking like Gucci. What is the pushback? Mm-hmm. The problem is we got so much time to argue with people that's trying to do the right thing. What what are you what are you doing? Oh, how can he say that when he was just over there talking to Jeezy about that was then. This is now. That's exactly what that means saying. he can wake anybody any day you can wake up and do the right thing, right? Mm-hmm. Whatever we do wrong in our life, right? That's like saying, we'll just talk about drinking. If I woke up tomorrow and said, you know what? I was drinking all yesterday. I was outside of my character. I ain't drinking no more. And somebody come up and be like, but nigga, you was drinking two weeks ago. I wasn't. He's a drinker. <laughs> Remember you was drinking. So how are you going to say don't drink? What are you talking about? It's not cool to be dissing somebody's dead family. I don't care when you talk about it. They be heavy on it too. But then we be sitting there and criticizing people for not doing the right thing. That's Gucci Man's a grown ass man. He ain't no young kid. This is a grown man. This is man is probably most likely late thirties into his forties. Yeah. I would be surprised if he's not going around with that message. I think more people should have that message. Mm-hmm. But they scared to do it. Gucci Man's self made, so he can do whatever he want. He don't care about the backlash. So shout out to Gucci man. Whoever got a problem with that, you just lame. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, I, I, that's what my thought was. Like, I agree with you on the whole point. Like, that's the past. And obviously, we you live and you learn. So it's like, okay, hey, this ain't what y'all want. And also, I feel like it's not saying there was ever a correct way to do it, but obviously, niggas nowadays are very loose with it. And they were kind of wild. I mean, they literally write lyrics, basically snitching on themselves. And so, yeah, I shot him on this street at this time a day. And his mama sat there and watched me do it. Why did you shoot him? That's why I be wondering, like, what? Why did you shoot him? He's the ops. What is an op? From what? Based on what? It's a crazy. Lot of a, lot of, a, lot, a lot to dissect there. That I don't think we would ever understand. You know, we're on you know different playing fields, different vibrations. Ideally, man, you just taught to hate each other, man. It's just it's dark. So you think we need more of Gucci to step up and kind of change the game? And I mean, I, I guess I would say the media has some influence on it as well. I mean, what's being pushed and what's on the playlist and like. Is there any, really a way to change it or to stop it besides those young boys stopping from saying what they're saying? Um, I'm not sitting there to say that wherever these guys are going through is not their real lived experience. Mm-hmm. But the problem is they don't understand the money behind it. Mm. Like it's one thing to, oh, I'm beefing with blah, 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 which is probably something that could be most likely worked out or not. Like you never know what the beef is, right? I'm not going to sit there and go and say, you don't have a legitimate reason not to like this person or vice versa. Right. But the problem is for everybody on the outside that's not in the situation, look at how much money is being made off these people's backs. How much money is being made off you dissing an op that you don't directly get. Right. And that's when it's like, well, that's dark. So you let other people come in, entities come in and make money off of your lived experience. Rather you really hate this person or not, you're letting people benefit off of that. That's It's kind of crazy it's, it's it's a little i mean everybody gonna look at how they want to look at it 
But it's like if you got a beef with your boy over here and y'all going back and forth killing each other, then I'm the one that makes all the profit though. Right. And I ain't got nothing to do with it. And I can give a fuck about you or his life. Right. That's where it gets dark. And that's why we need to kind of change the narrative and kind of just have more respect for each other, period. Like, we got to get back to having disagreements and you fight and it's over. It can't go to a switch or a ghost gun. Like, it's getting too far. We going too far with the, with the animosity. I used to have beefs in my hood. When I was growing up, we didn't like this street, whatever. We'd get up at the park and fight. And then guess what? Some of them people you grow up with and they tend to be your friends. Like, you can't even live it all the way out where it's like, damn, we used to go back and forth when we was a kid. I ain't used to like you, I ain't used to like you, but you turn out to be all right. You can't even have that experience because now we got ammunition and things in the hood that can just take you out like that. You can't even you can't even see it all the way out. Yeah, nobody's not. They're not like JD Young and him and his father got kicked. Well, they got shot. JD Young ended up passing away in New Orleans, I believe it was, and like literally shot him and his father. That's five crazy. Men, and his father ended up making it out, ended up making it to the hospital. Um, but JD Young, unfortunately, did not make it. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like what you said. It's just kind of like, damn, like you just. just it's did. dark, man. And it's a lot yeah. of deaths. It's a lot. It's a lot. And I, I just can't sit there and act like I'm cool with black men dying on my social media page mm-hmm. all the time. We outraged <clears throat> when we see police kill us. I'm even outraged when I see us kill us. I'm outraged to see black people dying in general. It don't yeah. make it even better where it's like, oh, no, because he's from the street. And th- what, what, what do we... When you really think about it, because I'm from the street too, what are we beefing about? Mm-hmm. We be beefing about nothing. You mentioned something. I used to help with your podcast. You used to have back in the day um, as well. And one thing I remember you talking about was about how us as people, when we're beefing against each other on the internet, and this goes like more mainly when it comes to like like sex, like men, women, and what we're talking about and the things like we're tearing each other down when it, at the end day it comes to that community, which is back to what you were speaking about earlier. Yeah, what's like, the end goal? Right. Like, yeah, you talking about, like, right now, it's like the battle of the sexes. Like, oh, women do this and this and that, and men are this and this and that. And it's like, okay, both things could be true. Now what? Correct. Now what? Because they are most likely are true. Both things are true. Men ain't shit. Women ain't shit. We all ain't shit. We whatever, but... I don't think we ain't shit. I don't talk like that. And, that, and that's another thing that's been normalized. Correct. It's really been normalized saying men ain't shit. Yes. It ain't been normalized saying women ain't shit. This is like some new... It's normalized. Yeah. It shouldn't be normalized because men are something, right? Words have tremendous power. Men are something, mm-hmm. right? If you don't like the outcomes in your life, let's figure out if we're going to have a dialogue, let's have a dialogue to figure like how we can come together, not to justify being apart. And I feel like that's the problem when it comes to those type of things. Why are we finding more reasons to justify to not be together when we all know it's a better outcome when we're together? We're together. That don't mean it's going to be perfect. But it's a better outcome when we work together. Clickbait. It's easy for people, you know, those are those topics. I mean, but it feeds off people trauma. Like I can easily find, we all can find something that speaks to our trauma. Yeah. But then it's like, okay, at what point do we want to get over our trauma? Because you know, when things speak to your trauma, you know what people do? They make money off of you. We live in a capitalistic society. So when you keep finding things that speak to your trauma, just know something behind it is making money. Yeah. And you got to look past that. One thing about me is I hate being told what to do. So if I see something, I see a trend of things, it's like, oh, they're trying to tell me to do this so I can buy this. I'm not doing that. They want us apart, so now I want to be together. That's just the thing. Like, I, And it's not to knock anybody's points of view. I think everybody's podcast and things they're talking about in a healthy way could be good. But at some point, I'm tired of women talking about how shitty men are. I'm tired of men talking about how women need to do this, this, and that. None of it makes sense. Right. Do you want to be with somebody? Yes or no. Yes exactly. Or no. If you don't, then you ain't got nothing to talk about. What's the point of going on a platform and talk about how much you don't want to be with somebody? Just don't be with them. People love doing that. I mean, I never understood that. I like when people, especially some celebrities, they literally go on there and I'm like, damn, bro, that's literally like nobody's business. And now you wonder why everybody's in your business. What do they want? Attention, fame, and attention. attention. Clout, all those things. They want it's attention. Like, then you mad because why y'all always saying because you let people inside your business. <laughs> <laughs> you, you let us know. Now we have something to talk about. Now we, we're able to bring it up. Again, when you do DJ and you do music, you also did a part, uh, program uh, with Remy Martin mm-hmm. with finding artists and artists getting their music out there. And a lot of artists, especially with media is changing and social media is changing. It's not where you get somebody that's CD anymore on a flash drive. And maybe it is, but a lot of artists are trying to make it. You know, I think that I would, it would be wrong, it would be not to be able to ask you your opinion for all my friends who are artists. Mm-hmm. Um, 
what is your advice for them that are trying to get their music out of like what do you think is like the biggest way for them to really like I know that's a loaded question for them to get some get on I guess is the right thing um like, I want to see you out which is probably not the way to do it but they say hey DJ Dan was like I got this song I want you to check out do people still do that no okay. thank god oh it was terrible it was a terrible <laughs> I think one one thing you have to do is build it's, it's always gonna come back to the same thing you have to build a community of fans right mm. so rather that's your neighborhood rather that's uh, you have a fan base online people want to see a fan base right people want to see because you, your music might not be my cup of tea right but if I see a collection of people rock with it it can sway me to go oh but wait this might be a new thing that I might be missing out on right so uh, really spend time to create and try to curate a fan base mm -hmm. and you got to start from the bottom you got to start doing whether that's showcases whether that's making TikToks or collabing with other artists you have to put that work in to do that and on top of that relationships are important relationships are build relationships important. with producers build relationships with other artists do shows for free do features for free um, do whatever you can do to get in kind of like a, a circle of winning because there are artists that, and they might not be the biggest artists, but they have something that you could kind of benefit from. Where it's mm -hmm. like, oh, they got a fan base. I'm trying to build mine. Let me try to collab more mm -hmm. with them. Yeah. Oh, this producer's doing his thing right now. Let me see how I can work with him. And use your resources. You got to really, the thing is about being an artist, you got to throw your emotions out the window because you need everybody on the way up. Absolutely. You're in a need, need, need situation. So when people tell you no and all that, you got to have that, that thick skin to go at it again like, I know you said no the first time, but right. what if I could do this? Like, you need a lot of people, so you can't really take everything so personal. Really take your music persona and just put it to the side and look at it like, I'm just growing this project, and whatever happens doesn't personally mean people don't like who I am. Right. Like, I'm growing this thing here. It's not personally against me. So if somebody don't like your music, doesn't mean I don't like, say if I made music, I don't like DJ Damage personally. Mm -hmm. It's just like, yo, your music need a little bit of work. Okay, what can I do? I don't know, man. Uh, you, you try to get some suggestions. Try to work around people. Listen to people that, that things work. You just got to be a sponge, honestly. It's really hard being an artist. And people think it's an easy thing, and it's one of the hardest things you can do. So just have some patience, have some thick skin, and just stay diligent, man. It's yeah. very, very hard. Yeah, and and, and because everybody's doing music, it's another one of those things. Everybody's Very hard. gonna do music, and everybody, you know, it's different genres and it's different types of music, and certain, you know, it's the mumble rapping and it's this type, and what's the wave and TikTok. Yeah, it's TikTok is huge right major, now. You gotta be you on TikTok. I mean, you gotta be on TikTok. Like you have to be. Like it's literally one of the biggest ways to push the reels and all that. I fucking hate reels on TikToks, but that's, that's <laughs> it's tough. It's fucking tough, but that's how you have to do it. What's next for you? I know we mentioned you got some 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 things you got in the works, and they know Hollywood Unlock has wrapped. And I, mm -hmm. I know you know you're probably still going with the wind, but I know we're trying to be more intentional. I'm on with the wind, but now I'm starting my own show. It's going to be called. I'm not going to put the title out yet. Okay. But I'm starting my own show, kind of like live with Lamar, okay, like one on one interviews. Yes. Um. So I'm really been working on that heavy, and I think that's the most overt thing that I feel like talking about. I have other things like behind the scenes, but like right. I'm working on my own show, and it's coming soon. And I can't wait to so show that to up. the world. I'm pulling up. Yeah, please pull up. I'm going to pull up. Even if I'm BTS, I'm going to be... Yeah, up. please pull up. Yeah, I can't wait to really make that happen. So, I'm, I'm working excited. on my own show. This Would this be your first show that's on your own? Yeah. That's why you always had a Yeah, I always had a co-host. Yep. But this is going to be... This is my first this one. This going to be your baby. Yeah. You're just going to birth something new. Yes. Yes, I'm working on that. I'm really proud about that. So, look out for that. It's coming soon. I didn't announce it yet. I'm still putting the final touches on it, but... Have my own show coming soon. I love that. We love a little tidbit of an exclusive. Mm -hmm. I decided that with Lava Lamar, I want to close out my episode and close out my show, each of my guests with like a very dope ass question, right? It's okay. a very off the wall question that they're not expecting. He didn't expect anything we talked about today, but I'm going to ask him this question. It's very thought provoking. I think you're a very humble individual. And so that's why my final question for you for this interview is what moment in your life do you feel like humbled you? the most humbled me the most mm -hmm. what moment in your life really was like you know what i can't do that again or like damn like that that really stunned like i gotta i gotta tell you know what do you find was probably one of your most humblest moments <clears throat> within your career your life fatherhood growing up philly la Shit, i've been humbled a lot <laughs> i love that 
when I didn't need to be humble too. I was like, God, <laughs> I know. I ain't know, God. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, wait, wait, why, why are we doing this? Why is my car breaking down again? Why? why? <laughs> What is, yo, bro. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> I have no hot water. Like, <laughs> like, you, 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 I didn't I need to know that. last time. I would say the most humbling moment was when, it was 2018, when I got laid off from Revolt and iHeart. Mm. And it wasn't at that time of being laid off. It was the journey of trying to find work after that. It was a humbling experience because since I could remember, I've been working nonstop. So I wouldn't say it was humbling in the fact where it's like, I needed to be humble, like, oh, my right, ego. Got, it was yeah. humbling in a, like a, a sense of, you need to realize where you at. Correct. So with that being said, I finally had time to reflect on my life. I never had the time. I was always working, working, going to school and working. Then after I went to school, I had a kid. So it's always been like this. So I finally had free time and I never knew what to do with free time. So I had an overwhelming, like overwhelmingly amount of like stress put on my chest because I didn't went through so much through this time, but I would just work and kind of like push it to the side. So I think that was humbling to go like, you have to do the, do the work and go through a lot of, you have to go through things that don't go away. I guess right. that's what I'm trying to say. Like you can go through a lot of things in life and think you're pushing it to the side and there's going to be a moment where it's going to come back and you have to deal with it. So I think it was humbling in that sense where it was like a lot of things that I pushed away. It was easy to push away because I was so busy. Mm -hmm. Not seeing family, dealing with certain types of breakups, not having parental figures, you know what I'm saying? Not having, you know, like certain things you can keep pushing away until you get to a point where it's like, I'm a grown ass man and I have all this free time. I'm sitting home like this and I'm feeling everything. Yeah. And I call that humbling because it was like, Man, I thought I could. I, really, I think the arrogance in me of thinking I could just push this stuff away and never having to deal with it, and now I have to deal with all of it at one time. And how am I going to do it? So that probably was the most humbling moment, where it's like you can't be arrogant enough to think you could just push away your problems for forever. You have to deal with them yeah. at one point in time. Yeah, and it kind of goes to your point earlier. You mentioned about like being the guy. Sometimes you you gonna have that moment where you're not. So you're on TV and you're hosting, and then it's like boom, now I'm laid off, and it's like fuck. You know, a lot of times, you know, people like me that are up and coming and are trying to do these things, it's, it's always great when we hear people we've seen in these certain lights. Like, damn, you got laid off before, too? Goddamn, shit. Guess it can happen to any of us. No, yeah, and I think because I come from radio, like, everybody know radio, you're going to be fired, right? So, like, <laughs> yeah, radio. Definitely. so the laying off thing wasn't such a big surprise. Okay. But that will be, might be for somebody. Some people don't know that. Like, in radio, we know coming up, it's like, you're going to be fired, you're going to be hired, you're going to be fired. That's just the entertainment game. So I was a little bit better equipped for that. Yeah. But I wasn't equipped for the emotions of my own personal life outside of that shit that I would have to deal with. Right. That's what I wasn't used to. I was used to always working and having something to do and being busy. Oh, I don't got time to, you know, oh, I can't see you right now. I was used to the running gun. And once the running gun was done, oh, boy. Woo! Depression. Depression, motherfucker. We deal with it. Appreciate that. Yeah, so that was definitely a time. 2018, for sure. 2018. That's when I moved to Tampa. That's when my life changed. Mm -hmm. a better. Good, because Pensacola God, sounds Pensacola. terrible. And back to Pensacola again. Baby brother, I appreciate you for coming on the show. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. I finally got a full interview out of you. I hope you enjoyed your time. Hope I you did. hope you're a little lit. You got to go find your little day party sliding too. Yeah, yeah, man. It's a Sunday. You can get you lit. Probably we get... live with Lamar. Look we'll at this. On set. On set live with Lamar. It's been great. My name is Lamar Robinson. This is my guest. Let people know how they can follow you. At The Real DJ Damage on everything. And follow. Oh, actually, check out the website, Legendary Media Group, because it might come back. LegendaryMediaGroup.com. Boom. And again, I'm Lamar Robinson. Make sure you guys subscribe. Tune in. Every other week, we have a new episode, another amazing guest like I had today, and we're back with another episode of Live with Lamar soon. Y'all peace out. <laughs>